we should be ready now to build our simple web application, which will allow Weights and Biases users to ask questions from our bot. Let's get started. In the config pie, we define our configuration, including the Weights and Biases uh, project, the job type. If we work in a team, then we set the team, which becomes the Weights and Biases entity. And we also define where do we pull our vector store from and where do we pull our prompt template from. And in this case, we are using weights and biases artifacts that we created in the previous video. We can also set uh, the model that we want to use uh, to run our application. We will be also using several functions defined in the chain.py file. Specifically, we want to load our vector store. And again, we will pull the vector store from weights and biases artifacts where we uploaded it after um, ingesting documents. We also want to load our chain and here specifically we will use the conversational QA chain from Langchain. Uh, we will be using the chat OpenAI model and we can choose between 3.5 Turbo and GPT-4. Uh, in this case, we define in the settings a GP, uh, chat GPT, uh, which is a 3.5 Turbo model. And we define the parameters, which again, we pull from the config file. And then we return this conversational retrieval chain, which is a utility defined in Langchain. And we will pass it on to our application so that, uh, we'll, so that we can respond to user questions by calling this chain. And finally, we have the get answer function, which uses our chain uh, along with the user question to provide back a response. So let's go back to our application. In this case, we are using a simple Gradio user interface, uh, which we will expose as a web application. We define this chat class, which will become our interface uh, that persists our vector store and our chain in between user calls. Here we need the configuration and we need the weights and biases run, which uh, is used to pull our artifacts, including the vector store and the chain. When we call this uh, chat interface, uh, what happens in the background is in case um, the vector store or the chain are not loaded, we load them, uh, we save them in that uh, chat object. And then we use the get answer function to create a response and append it to the history. Then we use a Gradio blocks to define our user interface. Specifically, we have a text box for the user question. We have another text box to specify OpenAI API key if we want to, our, if we want to expose it to our users and we don't want to share our OpenAI API key. In this case, I have set this as an environment variable, so I don't need to provide it. But in case you want to expose uh, your application on the web and you don't necessarily want to sponsor um, the OpenAI API calls, then you can request the users to provide their own key. Uh, we're also storing the state. Uh, we have uh, our uh, chatbot object. And then whenever a user submits a question, we call our chat object um, along with the default configuration. And we pass the question along with a state and receive back the answer that we can uh, expose in our user interface. So let's run this application now and see how it looks um, in our browser. Again, we're using weights and biases to pull our vector store and our documents. And the application is running on a local uh, URL. So let's uh, click this link. And we can see our Q&A bot uh, exposed um, via our browser. Uh, we can deploy this. Uh, we can deploy, deploy our application, for example, or on Hugging Face Spaces or on Replit. Uh, there are multiple ways. We will not go into the details of deployment in this course, but I encourage you to check out the additional links we provide uh, below this video to see the different deployment options that you may use. Let's uh, try to ask our uh, chatbot a query just to verify that it's working properly.
And now we can see the answer. Uh, we can see that to share a report with team members, there's a list of steps we can follow, including saving the report, clicking the share button, and so on. Uh, it could be correct, but this looks in fact a bit different from what we've seen in the previous um, videos when we, uh, when we explored a similar query and we implemented our retrieval chain. And maybe it would be interesting to see what happened behind the scenes and how this uh, chain was actually run, what was fed, uh, what was retrieved from our vector store, which documents were fed into the prompt. And to do that, we can use a weights and biases tracer. So let's take a look there. All right, so when we go into weights and biases, uh, remember we set our environment variable, langchain 1db tracing to true, and that means that all of the queries and uh, responses are streamed into weights and biases and we can analyze it there and see what uh, went well or what might have potentially gone wrong. In this case, we can see the question that we asked in our web interface, how do I share a report with my team members? And there is also the answer that we also saw in the user interface. And we can also see the trace timeline, the sequence of, uh, of function calls that uh, ultimately resulted in our generation. We can see the conversational retrieval chain that we define in lunch chain, which in turn calls the stuff document chains with a bunch of input documents uh, from lunch chain. And then if we go drill down into the LLM chain and ultimately the OpenAI, uh, we can see uh, the prompt here, which includes all of the documents that were stuffed into this, um, into the template. And if we scroll through this list of documents, we can see uh, first like the system part of the template. Uh, we uh, should be able to see uh, different documents which were retrieved from the vector store. Um, and if we scroll through, uh, through this, we can uh, put, hopefully find a, a document that talks about collaboration and sharing weights and biases reports. And it tells us that once you have saved the report, you can select the share button to collaborate. Draft copy of the report is created when you select the edit button, draft reports auto save. And we can see like this is actually what influenced um, the answer uh, of our LLM chain. So by using a weights and biases tracer, you can debug, you can understand what happened behind the scenes, what is the sequence of API calls uh, that was done to produce the answer. And in this case, we found in the prompt uh, the document that was used to generate this output. Uh, this way you can uh, do error analysis if some of the responses are potentially flagged as unhelpful by your users, you can see and drill down what happened. Maybe uh, the correct document was not retrieved for a given query and we need to improve something on the document search and the retrieval site. Maybe the model didn't perform so well and didn't find the right answer within the prompt. And maybe we can steer that, for example, by better prompt engineering or changing to a more powerful model. Maybe we should switch from GPT 3.5 to GPT-4 or Anthropic Cloud or a, a Cohere command model. There are many options available. And um, by doing this experimentation, we can improve our application. And this will be the topic of the next module where we will uh, develop a deliberate process of experimenting, improving our application, and evaluating our results. See you then.